Welcome back to our channel Sankalp Study Success. Today in this video we are going to learn about Central Limit Theorem. Here in this video we will see what is Central Limit Theorem and we will also solve some of the problems related to Central Limit Theorem. So let us see first of all what is the statement of Central Limit Theorem. Here x bar is the mean of the random sample of size n. Sample size is of n and x bar is the mean. And here with the population mean is mu and standard deviation is sigma. So the formula is z is equal to x bar minus mu by sigma by root n. This is the most important formula which we will use in each and every problem from now which is x bar minus mu by sigma by root n. This is nothing but central limit theorem. So here sigma by root n is nothing but the standard error. Correct? So we can also write it in the form of x bar minus mu by standard error. You can also write it as sigma x bar. So in this way, this is the most important formula which we will use from now to solve the problems of central limit theorem. So what does the central limit theorem says? Here x bar is the mean and the random sample of size n with the size n and with the mean of x bar and we are having the population mean as mu and the sigma is the standard deviation. See here we are having x bar which is nothing but the mean and here mu, mu is nothing but which is population mean right and sigma is the standard deviation here small n is the size of the random sample. So this is nothing but the central limit theorem. Let us see the first problem here in the central limit theorem. So the first problem is a random sample of size 100. That means what here small n is given as 100 right. So let us write all the given information with infinite population of mu is equals to 76. So let us write mu is equals to 76. And also we are having sigma square is nothing but 256. That is what which is variance. So let us find out this standard deviation which is nothing but sigma that is square root of 256 which is nothing but 16 correct so this is the standard deviation from the variance then we have to find out what is the probability that sample mean lies between 75 and 78 that means what we have to find the probability of 75 uh, which is lying between 75 and 78 that is nothing but 75 less than x bar less than 78 right so you have to find out this value. So how do we find out this value? We are from the central limit theorem z is equals to x bar minus mu by sigma by root n, right? So we are having the value of x bar which is nothing but 75 and 78 in this case, right? So mu is nothing but 76. We are having sigma and we are having root n. So now let us find out the directly the value of sigma by root n which is sigma is nothing but 16 and root n which is what is root n root of 100 right which is nothing more which is nothing but 16 by 10. We can also write it as 1.6 in the decimal form right which is 16 by 10 is also 16, say 1.6. So now let us find the value of probability which is lying between 75 and 78. So let us find out the value here by applying central limit theorem. Probability of 75 minus mu, mu is nothing but 76 by sigma by root n value directly it is 1.6. So let us substitute directly here which is less than x bar less than 78. What is 78? here 78 minus here the value of mu is again 76 by 1.6 which is nothing but sigma by root n so here if you simplify these values then you will get it as minus 0 0.625 which is less than x bar and also it is less than 1.25 okay if you solve this value then you will get it as minus 0 0.625 and if you solve this value you will get it as 1.25 so now here this is of the first form working procedure we have already seen this is of the first form and here both the signs of these numbers are different so if the signs are different then you have to add the areas right 
So let us add the areas area of minus 0 0.625 plus area of 1.25 right. Now you are going to add the areas. How do you get the values of areas from the Z distribution table correct. We are having the Z distribution table. So from that if you see these values then you will get it as 0 0.2324 plus it is 0 0.3944. So if you add these values then our answer will be 0 0.6268. So therefore our probability is lying between 75 and 78. What is that probability? 0 0.6268. This is the probability. So in this way you have to find out the values or you have to find out the solutions in this way by applying central limit theorem. Okay. So now let us see one more problem which is find probability of x bar is greater than 66.75 which is already given and of random sample of size 36 that means what is given here small n value is given small n value which is nothing but 36 it is taken from the infinite population where mu and sigma values are given directly for us mu is equals to 63 and sigma is equals to 9 so now what to do we have to find out sigma by root n correct so what is sigma by root n? Sigma value is 9 and root n is nothing but square root of 36. Square root of 36 is nothing but 6, correct? So here 9 by 6 value which is nothing but 1.5. This is sigma by root n. So now let us apply in finding the probability. That is nothing but p of x bar is greater than 66.75 which is equals to p of x bar is greater than 66.75 minus what is mu here which is 63 and divided by sigma by root n. Sigma by root n value is 1.5. So let us substitute 1.5 here. So now if you solve this, if you simplify this, then you will get it as it is 2.5. So now here this is of the second form right from the working procedure x bar is greater than 2.5 and also here this 2.5 is a positive number that means it is greater than 0. So now you have to subtract from 0.5 area of 2.5 you have to subtract it from 0.5 right according to the formula which we have. So now 0.5 minus you have to find out this area of 2.5 from the set distribution table then you will get it as 0 0.4938 so now if you simplify further then our answer will be 0 0.0062 so the probability which is greater than here x, x bar greater than 66.75 you will get it as 0 0.0062 so in this way we will find out these values so these two problems were similar right these were the similar problems but the working procedure which was different this is of second form and the first problem it was of first form so now let us see one more question which is of different model a sample is taken from infinite solution then what happens to standard error that means we have to find the relation of standard error of sample size is increasing from 400 to 900 that means what we are this is nothing but the size so in the solution what is given actually is here small n1 is 400 and small n2 is 900 correct because here we are increasing the sample size from n1 to n2 that is 400 to 900. So we are having s1 and s2. So we have to find out the standard error relation of standard error. Why we are finding the relation between the standard error is he is asking what happens to standard error if you increase from 400 to 900. That means let us find the standard error 1 here and we will find standard error, error 2 here. Okay. So what is the formula of standard error sigma by root n1 because here it is n1 right so it is root n1 so what is sigma here which is not given so let us take it as sigma only sigma by square root of 400 that is nothing but sigma by 20 right then we will find the standard error 2 as well sigma by root n2 which is nothing but sigma is not given so let us consider it as sigma only root 900 is nothing but 30 so we will take it as sigma by 30 now let us see what is the 
relation between standard error 1 and standard error 2 because here let us see standard error 2 will become 2 by 3 times of standard error 1 right because sigma and sigma gets cancelled 3 by 2 will be the remaining if it is sigma se1 is equals to 3 by 2 of se2 and se2 is equals to 2 by 3 of se1 so in this way you have to find the relation between the standard error when the sample is increasing from 400 to 900 now let us see if the sample decreases then what happens See, the next question is, the question is same. You have to find out the relation between the standard error, but the sample is decreasing from 800 to 200. That means what here? N1 is 800 and N2 is 200. So, it is sample size is decreasing from 800 to 200. So, here you have to find out the standard error only, right? So, we will find out sigma by root N1. And here SE2 is equals to sigma by root N2. Then what happens is here sigma is not given so we will consider it as sigma only and the square root of 800. Here sigma by square root of 800 is nothing but 20 root 2 correct. So we got this value. So now here sigma is not given so let us write it as sigma only root N2 which is nothing but square root of 200. So that is equals to sigma by 10 root 2 correct so sigma by 10 root 2 this is sc1 and this is sc2 so now we have to find out the relation between sc1 and sc2 that is standard error 1 and standard error 2 that means what happens here sigma and sigma gets cancelled root 2 and root 2 also gets cancelled we will be remaining with sc2 is equals to 2 times of sc1 correct so this is the relation if Sample is decreasing from 800 to 200. So what did you observe here from the previous problem and this problem is if the sample is increasing or decreasing it doesn't matter we will just take it as n1 and n2 and we will find the standard errors of both n1 and n2. Then you have to just find out the relation because he is asking about only the standard error. So that is the reason we are doing in this way. So now let us see one more problem which is you have to find mean and the standard deviation of sampling distribution of means of 300 random samples. That means what here? Small n is equals to, here the size is 36, here small n is equals to 36 and then it is taken from the population of size 1500. That means what? Capital N is equals to 1500 because it is the population size which is capital N. This is the sample size which is small n. Here, then we will see which is normally distributed with mean is equals to 22.4. That means what mu is given as 22.4 and the standard deviation is also given which is 0.048. So let us write sigma is equals to 0.048 of sampling is done with or re without replacement. That means you have to find with replacement and also without replacement. Also find expected number of random samples having their means between these three. See, we are having three sub questions in this. So now let us first of all find with replacement and without replacement. Now let us see here with replacement. It is with replacement. So if you see with replacement, we know that mu is nothing but mu x bar is nothing but mu only, right? So, which is nothing but the value is 22.4 itself. Uh, with replacement, we are getting the mu as 22.4. Now, let us find sigma of x bar. Sigma of x bar is nothing but with replacement, we are having the formula is nothing but sigma by root n, right? Sigma by root n. Sigma value is already given which is 0.048 which is divided by root n. Root n is nothing but root 36. That is nothing but 0.048 by 30 root 36 is nothing but 6 so if you divide 6 8s are 48 right that means 0 0.08 will be the sigma sigma x that x bar okay this is with replacement now let us find out what is sigma without replacement okay so now let us find out without replacement here without replacement 
Without replacement, you have to find mu and sigma. Here, mu is again same, right? Mu x bar is nothing but mu only, which is nothing but 22.4. There is no change in the mean. And now, here we are finding sigma of x bar. Sigma of x bar, here the formula without for without replacement, what is the formula? Is sigma by root n and into square root of capital N minus small n by capital N minus 1. This is the formula for without replacement. So now let us substitute all the values into this formula so that we can get the answer as 0 0.048 by root n. Root n is nothing but root 36, right? Which is 6, root 36 and into 1500 minus 36 by 1500 minus 1. So by substituting all these values and if you simplify this, then you will get it as 0 0.0079, which is the standard deviation for without replacement. So now let us find out the first question where the probability is lying between see here 22.39 and 22.41, 22.39 and 22.41. The probability is lying in this way. So now, how do we find out the prob probability is 22.39 minus what is mu? Mu is nothing but 22.4 by sigma by root n, correct? For with replacement 0 0.008 which is less than x bar is less than 22.41 minus 22.4 which is divided by 0 0.008. So, by applying central limit theorem, we have found this because x bar minus mu by sigma by root n, correct? So, now, if you solve these values, then you will get it as minus 1.25, which is less than x bar and x bar is also less than plus 1.25. So, here, this is of the first form of working procedure and you are having two different signs. That means here we are having plus sign and here we are having minus sign. So, we have to add the areas here. So, area of minus 1.25 plus area of 1.25. So here, what is the area of, uh, both the numbers are same, that means area of 1.25. So we can write it as 2 into area of 1.25, right, which is nothing but 2 into area of 1.25 value from the z distribution table is 0 0.3944. This is the value. So that if you multiply into 2, then you will get it as 0 0.788, right. So, this is the probability which is lying between 22.39 and 22.41. So, in this way you have to find out the values. So, now let us find out the first one we are done with the first one. So, now let us find out if the probability is greater than 22.42. What happens if probability x bar is greater than 22.42? So, now let us apply central limit theorem which is 22.42 minus mu is 22.4 which is divided by 0 0.008. Now, if you solve this value then you will get it as p of x bar is greater than 2.5. See this is of the second form and also here z1 that means 2.5 which is greater than 0. That means we will subtract from minus 0 0.5 right area of 2.5. So here, what is the area of 2.5 from the z distribution table? You will get it as 0 0.4938. So the value of 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4938, you will get it as 0 0.0062. So here we got this value. Now, we have found this probability, first probability and second probability. But let us see what is the question. You have to find expected number of random samples also having their means. Expected number of random samples. How many sample distributions are there for us? There are 300 sample distributions. That means you have to multiply for the first one here. We will multiply 0 0.7 into 300, right? So that you will get the random samples here. 0 0.0062 you will multiply by 300 in order to get the random samples. So approximately the value will be here it is 237 and the value will be 
2 here which is 1.86 exactly so the, uh, approximately we will take it as 2 so in this way you have to find out the number of random samples now the third one we are done with the second one right the third one is probability is less than 22.37 now let us see what if probability is that means p of x bar is less than 22.37 correct 22.37 so now by applying central limit theorem what do we get p of x bar is less than 22.37 minus 22.4 because mu value is 22.4 divided by 0 0.08 so now if you simplify this value which is equal to if you simplify this value then you will get it as p of x bar is less than minus 3.75 you will get it in this way now what this is of the form third form which is from the working procedure it is of the third form and also here this z value is less than zero that means it is negative value so what do we do we will just subtract it from 0.5 area of minus 3.75 you will subtract this area from 0.5 then you will get it as now you have to find out the area of minus 3.75 from the z distribution table so from the z distribution table you can say that the value is 0.499 so by further simplification you will get the answer as 0.001 here we got the probability but you have to find out the random samples that means how many number of random samples you have to find out so random samples is equals to you have to multiply by 300 right because total number of random samples are 300 so 300 into 0 point sorry it is triple zero one so then you will get the answer as 0 0.03 so it is approximately which is equal to zero okay so in this way you have to find out the problems so now these are the problems of central limit theorem which are the most important problem and you may get it for long answer questions in the external exam. So thank you for watching the video. Let us meet in the next video.